previous video we learned about margin and a few other properties, but now it's time to take a look at padding. Padding is similar to margin and it's easy to confuse the two, but they're not the same thing. Whereas margin adds space around your element, padding adds space to the inside of your element. So first I'm going to paste in some placeholder text into our div and this will allow you to see padding in action much more easily. So I'm just going to paste it right in there. And when we switch over to the browser and refresh, you can see that the text is there, but aesthetically it's kind of difficult to read because it's all right up against the sides of the element. Let's remedy this with some padding. So I'm going to switch back to the text editor and I'm going to switch to our CSS file and I'm just going to type out padding and I'm going to say 25 pixels and when we switch over to the browser and refresh you can see that some nice padding can really go a long way when it comes to readability. Now let's take a closer look at the padding property. The syntax for padding is very similar to the syntax for margin. I could apply padding to any side of the element simply by using the individual padding properties like this. So if I were to type padding top and give it 25 pixels and type padding bottom and give that 25 pixels, we could switch over to the browser and refresh and you can see that there's now only padding on the top and on the bottom but not on the sides. Now let's switch back to the text editor again. I could also use the consolidated syntax and write the equivalent just by using the padding property by itself. So I applied 25 pixels of padding to the top and bottom. We could write that out like this. So I'm just going to delete what I have here and leave padding there. And I'm going to give the top and bottom 25 pixels and the left and right 0 pixels just like we can with the margin property. So when I switch over to the browser and refresh, you can see that it looks exactly the same. Now one important thing to note with padding is that when you add padding to an element, you're essentially increasing the amount of space it takes up on the page. Margin does this too, but it does it invisibly. When you use padding, the element actually looks larger on the page rather than just being more spaced out. So if I wanted to add 200 pixels to both sides using padding, I might do something like this. So just switching back to the text editor, I can type 0 pixels and 200 pixels. And when I switch back to the browser and refresh, you can see that the element actually now looks larger. Now remember, when we applied some margin to the top of our element, it simply pushed the parent element down as well. We can remedy this by applying padding to our wrapper div instead of applying margin to our element. So let's try that. So when I switch over to the text editor here, we're going to just select the wrapper div and I'm going to say padding top and we'll give it about 25 pixels. And when we switch over to the browser, and refresh, you can see that we now have some space above our element without pushing down the parent element. Remember, padding is applied to the interior of an element. Margin is applied to the exterior. When making websites, you'll need to use both of these very frequently, so make sure you familiarize yourself with them. Next up is the position property. So far, you've probably gathered that the content on web pages tends to flow from top to bottom. This is indeed the case, and it's best to respect this flow rather than fight against it. Sometimes, though, you really just need to position something very explicitly. On our div, I'm going to apply the position property. So I'm just going to switch back to the browser, and I'm just going to erase all this padding here. And I'm going to say position absolute. This is saying that I would like to position my element according to some absolute coordinates. There are four more properties called top, right, bottom, and left that we can use to actually position the element. 
Let's use top and left to push our element away from the edges of the browser. So I'm just going to type top and give it 25 pixels and left and also give that a value of 25 pixels. So let's refresh the browser and as you can see our element has jumped outside the wrapper. This is because our element is being absolutely positioned relative to the browser. Let's try another property. Instead of left, let's use right. So switching back to the text editor, I'm just going to change left over to right here. And when we refresh the browser, you can see that our element is now 25 pixels away from the right. By using right instead of left, you're telling the browser you want your element 25 pixels away from the right side of the page. If there were a page element further down the tree that was a parent to our element, we could actually make that parent the element that ours is positioned relative to. Now, even to a fairly decent web designer, that's a confusing concept. So let me just show you what I mean. We're going to switch back to the text editor and I'm going to select the wrapper div again and I'm going to position it relative. Now let's switch back to the browser and refresh and watch this closely. By applying position relative to our wrapper, we're saying that we want anything that's absolutely positioned inside of our wrapper to be absolutely positioned relative to the wrapper as opposed to just being positioned relative to the page. Those are some of the basic properties you'll need when laying out a web page, but as you probably guessed, there's a lot more properties to learn.